So hello, it's the KB meeting. We have lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, so let's get started. First one, I put this one on here, forum responses. Do we need a plan for localization? I think that's Kadir who says, can responses, they're localizable. And I, and yes, they are. But I guess um, what I've seen is maybe one or two have been accidentally set ready for localization and the, all the others are not. And I'm afraid to mark anything ready for localization because I don't want, you know, the Germans localizing them, the Italians localize, and then we don't have, or they're going to go, why are you telling me about this? Yeah, I, I thought about that too. Um, so essentially you have to mark them as uh, localizable because otherwise you can't localize them into Portuguese or... Right. Uh, yeah, so Ralph, I think Ralph wants to say something. Um, so yeah, uh, since uh, since the forums, uh, since the can responses are used in the forums and the forums were localized to Portuguese already, um, I had started some work for the localization of the can responses and I had gone already and set all of them ready for localization. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did? Uh, when did you do that? Yeah. Uh, probably about a week and a half ago, two uh, weeks ago. Okay. We're so big now that we can't keep track of every single moving part. Yeah, but you have to do that anyway. Otherwise, um, it would just not work. Uh, you, you wouldn't be able to localize the CAN response system right. to any language uh, because you don't say this is local. Oh, I know. I now understand what you mean, Michael. But I, you know, you but I'm thinking about, about Android. We don't have Android localized forums. So yes, you do. Their dashboard will localize. In Portuguese, if you I, do. If I, if I, yes, you do. If I, Yes, you do. Yeah, it's all one forum. In Portuguese, oh. in Portuguese, people can ask questions about Android. Okay, but um, I was about to submit three canned responses today from Android, and um, so contributing from Android that is not supported yet. Right. No, 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 no. I mean, canned responses that people can use on desktop for Android. Yeah. So I set those to localizable. Is that the conclusion here? So, so there are two things that we're talking about here. Uh, one of them is um, uh, marking something as ready for localization. Uh, uh, so then it appears on the localization dashboard, and then yeah, we don't want to uh, do that, right? To... Yes, we yeah, do. So that's what I'm talking about now. Oh, we do. Um, okay. So the other one is marking something as localizable. Um, that makes it possible for the localizer to actually go in there and say, yeah, I want to translate this. We have a setting for that. If you don't, uh, if you don't check that setting, it means that uh, no one can actually localize the article. It, sometimes it makes sense. In this case, as, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Ralph, I think you're talking about uh, the uh, localizable part, right? Like making it even possible to localize, not marking yeah. something as ready for localization. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. The, uh, the one check mark. Yeah, you're correct. Okay, so if, if we don't have any revision uh, mark ready for localization of those articles, they won't show up on the dashboard. Right. So that's the short-term solution. Uh, because right now, no one has to care about them except for Portuguese. Except. And we already have set it up for Portuguese. But, but the Portuguese can't localize them if they're not marked ready for localization. Correct. Well, they can. They can? They can. Yeah, they can. It's just that they won't be able, it won't show up on the localization dashboard. Uh, it won't, uh, we won't be able to tell them um, this has changed from the last version to this version. Uh, they have but to know the URL totally, though, right there. But what version? Something. Yeah, as long as you have the article. But what version will they localize? Probably the latest one that is um, published. It doesn't matter. I mean, they can just click on localize this. They go on the page, on the English page. Yeah, I'm uh, going to look say right now. Say, I want to localize this. Probably the last approved version of English. That's what they will get as the base. I thought they only get the last approved ready for localization version, which would be none. No, the, the, the ready for localization part is only relevant for the localization dashboards. Ah, So okay. there you, you, you either show them or you don't show them um, based on whether... Um, you have a revision that is ready for localization. But people are still, sh and they should be able uh, to go ahead and, and just localize the latest. So Tom, uh, Thomas does that sometimes. Uh, you know, he, or, or I think even um, 
other people might do that too. Oh, to I localize see. an English article, even though it's not ready for localization yet. It just gives you, a, I see, it gives you an error. It says you're translating an English document which is not uh, yet ready for localization, but it doesn't prevent you from doing it. Yeah. I never realized that. There is the other setting that you would use if you don't, if you really don't want people to localize an article. That is the setting that you use. Then you can just say this article is not localizable. Um, we do that. We do that on some articles, I think, um, that are really just just for us. Uh, that people should never localize. It doesn't make sense. Got you. Yeah. Rosanna. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. No, I I just had a question because. Um, you know, lately I've seen a lot of things surfacing, like uh, there are many features that we're not aware that we have in Kitsuni or this type of, uh, you know, notifications that we get. Um, I, I assume that most of the things, you know, the features in Kitsuni are documented, you know, in Bugzilla uh, on the box when they were made. But I was wondering um, if there's any other, like, like just like a product guide to Kitsuni, like where we list all of the features and everything, because I think as the product gets more complex, um, these type of things kind of fall, you know, fall between the cracks. And I think that for new contributors and even for us, sometimes it would be good to know, you know, all the features that we have. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. many of them are documented in our contributor documentation, but especially the kind of admin stuff is not. That's an right. Issue. The admin stuff is not uh, right. Like like groups all. and dashboards and private messages, all of that. Like if we, like I don't want to put extra work on anyone. I'm just saying that um, it could be helpful um, to have like a little like product uh, documentation uh, related to to um, uh, Kitsuni. I I I I I'm sure that all of those things are documented in in Bugzilla. But as we grow um, and as we get new people, um, it could be helpful. Well, I'll tell I you. I started to go ahead. I started something for that on the internal wiki, uh, but it didn't get very far. So I think there is very, very little uh, is documented yet. Um, yeah, but it's a good idea to start that. How about this? Just as a as as a like stopgap, just so we don't lose stuff. What if we create um, uh, a sumo document? And any time we add or change a feature, at the very least, we can just link the bug in that uh, thing and then, you know, and put a note, needs to be documented or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at the very least, you know at least where the bug is, where you can look up what the heck this thing was about. And, yeah. and best case, someone will go write a document about it. Good yes. idea. If only we had a That's task good. tracking system where we could Great assign idea. tasks. That's to awesome. And then if someone gets super industrious, they can go back in the past and look at old bugs for features that we've built. Right. Yeah. Okay, so the conclusion of this one is that when I'm writing a canned response for Firefox or Android on my desktop browser, I set it to localizable, but I do not flag it as ready for localization. Well, that's a question I right. was going to ask. So, so that's what I why I wanted to say. This is a short. It's a short term solution because right now this is only relevant to Portuguese, and we are we are the ones who kind of own Portuguese for now. Right. So we know what's going on, uh, but this is not a long term solution. So uh, long term, when we add more locales, we have to come up with a different way. And one way uh, that I was thinking of was uh, to have another section in the uh, localization dashboard um, that is about uh, can't responses um, or just for forum, forum specific. And then you can show this uh, section for those locales that have opted in uh, to use our forums. If you don't use our forums, then you don't see that see section. It. That's a good idea. And so Ralph, the you got so Portuguese. No, Ricky is probably not wild about doing that. Uh, the dashboard is probably pretty wild as it is already with all the SQL yeah. queries and filters that you're doing there. But I, I thought that might be the cleanest solution um, to just show it to users who actually can do something with it. So Ralph, yeah, do you know you're sure. showing us your dialog box there? Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, I'm not sure if you guys are able to see it. Um, are you guys able to see the allow translation? Uh, page. I see the no, about yeah, right version. Right now you're showing you, yeah. 
I see the about oh, yeah, Firefox, the Firefox uh, dialogue. Oh, the upgrade Firefox window. Here we go. This is a different one. So there's a the allow translation there. Are you guys ah. able to see this now? Yes. So yeah, for for creating a new article or I guess for editing an article that was not allowed to have a translation before, there's this checkbox here, and uh, right. that's what yeah. when I talked to Kadir, that was a, the check mark that would allow me to translate it to Portuguese. Right. Got it. Yeah. So also this is in the uh, yeah. So as long as no one marks a revision as uh, ready for localization, there shouldn't be an issue. It won't, Got it. won't show up on the localization dashboard. It won't bother anyone. Thank you for that yeah. explanation. But maybe an action item. I should file a bug to actually get the other implementation, the long-term implementation in place. So that we only show this to. We have another category, and we only show that category to users who are who have opted in, sorry, for locales that have opted in to the uh, forum, to using our forum, and then we only show that on the dashboard for those locales. Okay, I put something there in action items, you can reword that. Uh, that's as best as I could do and listen to you at the same time. Sure thing. <laughs> put the bug number in here, could you, and that way we have a chance of getting it back later. Oh, and I do not know how to type. Oh. Um, okay, anything else about can forum responses and localization? Nope. Okay. Nope. This next one, I think, uh, is something Kadir added. Do you want to explain <laughs> this, Kadir? Uh, yes. So. Uh, yeah, in the forums, uh, we now since we moved to uh, Google Analytics, uh, we also uh, gained the ability to uh, get stats for more than two thousand um, articles. Wild, right? I know. <laughs> so now we can actually uh, track also how many views um, uh, forum responses are. Oh, sorry, uh, forum threads are getting, which is really interesting because. If you um, if you if you look into the Me Too count, um, the the one with the most Me Too counts uh, currently has I think about two hundred of them, uh, where people say yes I have this problem too, but if you compare that with the um, uh, unique views on uh, Google Analytics, what it will tell you is that the same thread that got two hundred Me Too votes has been seen by five thousand five hundred people. So that's that's quite a difference, um, and it's interesting because as a contributor, oftentimes when I'm editing something in the or when I'm replying to a question in the forum, it seems like I'm replying to to one person and I'm just helping one person. I, I actually I'm not aware of how many other people might have the same issue, and if I could see that, yeah, actually, you know, you know what, five thousand people have seen this thread. Um, then I'm a lot more motivated to actually go through with it and make sure that there is a solution in that thread, um, no matter what the thread starter is doing. Because I'm not trying to help one person here. I'm trying to help a few hundred or a few thousand people who are seeing this thread. And right now we are not displaying the view count because we, we didn't have the ability before. Now we do have the ability. And I was going to suggest that we um, maybe swept this for the uh, Me Too count on the threat listing page um, and add it to the, um, to the forum, uh, for, to the threat view itself. So in the threat view, you would see 200 Me Too votes, 5,000 views. And on the threat listing page, you wouldn't go by Me Too votes. You would go by um, 5,000 views last week or 2,000 views total or something like that. Um, and I wanted to see what people think about that. Rosanna, I think, had something. Yeah, uh, no, I, I actually, I, I think that, you know, like every time that we can show contributors uh, the impact of their contribution, and I think that this is clearly the case, uh, I think it's wonderful. So I wanted to say, like, plus one, yes. Um, I think it's good to, to show contributors uh, their contribution. 
Uh, just related to that, I think that was one of the ideas that we had from the first round of the Elton um, editing tools, uh, but it was, this was not only related to that, is that uh, we sent uh, contributors like a monthly email uh, with uh, how many people have seen their contributions, if it's in the forum or if it's a, you know, a localized article or uh, an article that they edited in the KB, that we sent out uh, this type of, of uh, you know, stats or whatever. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, if we're thinking about that, that we don't forget about this other thing because I think they're related and, you know, it makes sense for contributors. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, now that we have the ability to actually track all of our articles and all of our form threads, it makes sense to use that data and show it and actually also just, just uh, get it into a format that is useful to, for contributors. There are a number of questions around this, though, and uh, Ricky uh, asked them, uh, a few of them already in the um, uh, in the bag that is linked from here. So if you are interested in this, um, if you are interested in answering those questions, if you are interested in, in uh, working on this, you can just follow. Um, I'm not sure why there are two bags linked. Oh, oh yeah, so you can follow along um, on the bag uh, and answer questions like. Uh, how many of those uh, threads are we following? Um, what do we do as long as we don't have uh, data because we only update the data once a day? And, uh, and questions like that. So if you are interested in answering any of those questions, please uh, go to Bugzilla and join the discussion. So that's, that, that is where the discussion is going to happen from now on if we are all on the same page that we should do this. We can't have both me too and the view count? Yeah, we do have that actually. So that is my suggestion that on the uh, th uh, forum, on, on the thread page itself, you would have that in the, on the top of the page. Uh, I, linked a, I linked a screenshot. Um, yeah. So you would see oh, right. 200 oh, me too votes and uh, if you, how many uh, views this actually has. But on the thread listing page, I would rather swap this uh, the Me Too information for the views because the the the, the Me Too votes they they are very uh, if if you don't look at the top uh, articles with the top Me Too votes they are very similar so there, there there are not that many Me Too votes and it's it's hard to distinguish them just based on that um, so with the view counts you would have a much better chance to tell people which ones are the really interesting articles to work on right now because. A lot of people are seeing them, not on the threads. So that's why I would suggest uh, swapping them on the thread listing page. Um, also, so it doesn't become too busy. Because if we have um, Me Too votes, uh, helpful votes, and uh, view counts on the same page uh, on the thread listing page for each each right. thread, it gets very very busy. Okay. All right. What's next? Oh, next is so. Uh, uh, All right. right. This is uh, so. Rosanna, you had proposed. Uh, you and I were talking once about a uh, a central place, right? To say who's working on what articles, um, kind of thing. At least for the technical writing program, although. Uh, it will be helpful for other people, too, who are not in the technical writing program to know that some people have already grabbed articles and they're working on them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, Roland drafted up a, an example, but I, oh. I was remembering you had something else maybe in mind. Do you want um, so to remember? To, to be very, very honest, like I, I just came back and I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, I have lots of emails and stuff. So um, I haven't seen your, your proposal, Roland. Uh, I just wanted to say I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow up with more detailed feedback, but that's pretty much the same feedback I got from the Mozilla Hispano community, that they also wish to have some sort of project page uh, to see when what is happening and, you know, all of these things. So maybe we can, I don't know. Do well, what I propose, like, Rosanna, is, and I uh, can put it in IRC, but it's just a simple wiki page that has desktop and Android. It has the articles that are a result of the research thread. Mm -hmm. And it seems that the program, correct me if I'm wrong, was working now. 
and we seem to do the bulk of the articles. Of course, we're not going to be able to have a wiki page or a spreadsheet or anything that has all the articles that are being approved. That queue can be, there's no way you can keep up. But the major changes uh, release by release every six weeks, having a page summarizing the research thread and what we're writing on, I think is a good idea. And I think is along the lines of what you're saying. But I mean, obviously, you can read the email. Right. You can read it. Well, it's linked right there. It's if yeah, you just I, I, look. I, I just saw it. Yeah. 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 Um, um, we could also maybe do it. I mean, we could just literally do it. We could do it as an Etherpad, one less account yeah. for people to create. I would love to do it on Sumo, but then it has to get approved every single time someone makes <laughs> a change to it, and that's a hassle. Um, so maybe. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So maybe an Etherpad. Uh, well, the reason I didn't list. do it as an Etherpad is, is it ni it's nice to, um, maybe what we should do is do it as an Etherpad, like, like uh, with in, in MediaWiki, and then I'll transfer it at the end so that we have a permanent record, only one Etherpad. That's what a lot of teams do, right? They keep it at like mm -hmm. the channel meetings. They have one Etherpad, and then they manually transfer it to a Wiki. Why? Right? So that we have a permanent record of who wrote what, and so that we can look up on it and not have multiple etherpads. But, yeah, I don't. I mean, that seems like extra work. The thing about having the wiki is that people can track changes. You can save revisions right. of etherpads, and um, the articles themselves have a history. And all right, I don't. Well, know. Let's, let's try let's the etherpad. A, I, let's say let's keep it simple. That's why I was suggesting the etherpad. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Roland, I have a couple of ideas and some feedback from the Mozilla Hispano community. Um, so maybe we can sync, you know, I mean, this is not rocket science, right? Uh, but maybe we can sync and find a way of, you know, having an article maybe in the KB that's, you know, that we approve once and then maybe linking to an etherpad where people can, right. you know, put their names, you know. But the, the, okay. the, the yeah, basic yeah, yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with the etherpad. But sorry, Rosanna, what? The basic idea? No, what? I, I mean, the basic idea is to have really like a central place where people can find like like the last book you like your last uh, project plan for KB and localization, and from then we can link to things that you know need to be more flexible, like maybe who's who assigned themselves to which article right. and this type of things. Yeah. So, so Michael, are you saying one one Etherpad per release then? I don't know. That does to me that doesn't matter. Yeah. You could do one. It, that's a p kind of a pain. You could you could just save revisions and wipe it, but I think what Rosanna is talking about is, let's have a Sumo page that is the central repository for the Etherpads or Google Docs or what's going on of yeah. or whatever of where to find the information. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. That's easy enough. Cool. Well, Rosanna, yeah, yeah, just give us your thoughts, and then we'll figure it out together. Yeah, All of absolutely. You, me, and Michael, and whoever else is interested. Um. Okay. Android menu button. So the the um, uh, Who this up? the Ita the Italian uh, oh, awesome. guys uh, emailed me this morning. They were looking ah. over the private browsing on Android article, and um, so I think there was confusion. So the basic deal is right. You've got Android phones that have sort of they have hardware keys for the menu. You have sure. um, you have uh, newer Android phones that get the menu button up in the corner, but you also have newer Android phones that still have a sort of hardware menu button. It's actually on the phone body itself, but it's not an actual button, you know. And so, yeah, even pop, though they have play. Jelly Bean, they don't have the three dot thing up in the corner. So it's confusing. So um, here's a proposal for how to say that in an article. My proposal is we say tap the menu button, and then you have this explanation in parentheses. 
On some phones, this is along the bottom edge of the phone. On others, it's a software menu in the top right. Because those are the two things. Now, uh, hardware menu uh, along the bottom of the phone may be a physical clicky button, but probably it's like a light up thing that's only, you only even see maybe even when, like on some phones, you don't even see it until you touch and then that's it right. lights up. It's completely invisible. Yay design, completely invisible buttons that are so you're, you're only show up when you touch, but change the template to match that text. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's confusing because sometimes if you're using one phone with the menu button always there, and then you move to a phone like the Nexus 4 with the menu buttons that are just soft menu buttons displayed, you're yeah. like, where is it? Yeah. And it's, it's only confusing when you switch phones. <laughs> pretty consistent when you're not when you stay on the same phone but yeah I think we should change it change it please okay go ahead and roll it I'll add that one for you okay uh, so oh, okay all right got it let's see um, oh so uh, Kadir and I tried to set up this uh, test with Optimizely uh, just before the meeting. We didn't quite get it uh, to work, but almost working. But um, just to show you the idea, um, we're going to test uh, collapsible sections on articles. So um, there's a link there to our current private browsing article. And then I made a mock-up of a test article where all the sections are collapsed. So we show you like one line at the top, what private browsing is, one line explaining how to use it, like one sentence each thing, and then the video, and then everything else is collapsed. And if you want to read the details about turning it on and off, you uncollapse that selection. You want to read the details about what it saves or doesn't save, you uncollapse that selection, that section. Um, so there's a proposal for a new feature for, for Sumo articles, which is this collapsible section. So it um, uh, looks like we can e uh, easily test whether that's helpful or not. I certainly really like the way it could look. It could really simplify big, long articles, like long troubleshooting stepped articles kind of thing, too. Try this step. OK, now do the next step, you know, that kind of thing. That might be another test, like on the on a troubleshooting article. So that's an FYI because we have nothing to report yet, other than we learned a little bit about Optimizely. Um, let's see, Firefox OS localization strategy. So I was talking to, to Ralph about this. Oh, Ralph, you wrote all this. I'm looking at colors. Um, uh, so we were talking before the meeting, but the idea was about like we were talking at our at our what do we call these things team meetups <laughs> about um, about a, a strategy for getting everything localized uh, for the launch. Do you want to uh, say what you guys talked about? Yeah, sure. And uh, Rosanna can also input if if I end up saying something that um, that's not very right. But from, from my understanding from of what we spoke to the Hispanic community is that they understand that uh, even if an article is completely finished, that uh, there's a pretty good possibility that it, that it will get changed and updated in the future. Um, but they would like the article to be as completed as possible before sending it up to translation. Uh, and they do like the idea of chunking it up uh, so that it's so that there's a, a bigger focus and so that so that there's cycles uh, to the translations. Um, so yeah, they do like that idea. And they also said, uh, well, speaking to the uh, at the Sumo event yesterday, of prospective uh, contributors, I asked them what they think of the idea also, and they said that they also like the idea. They also agreed with that same thought process. Uh, they said that ten is probably just a magic number, and that. Uh, it would probably depend on how many articles the, the English community or, or the English speaking community could uh, 
complete as as good as possible uh, before sending it off to translation on each cycle. Yep. Um, just just to comment on that, I mean, especially we, we're talking about the Firefox OS articles and you know the 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 amount of updates, and they definitely rather have more time pressure in the sense of uh, articles need to get translated more quickly because maybe a launch date or something is closer. Uh, but they don't want to update them all the time. So basically, you know, we, we should mark them ready for localization when they're ready, yeah. rather than to mark them and then, you know, update Keep them. Keep working on them. That, yeah, that, that's basically what they asked us. Yeah. I mean, and just for reference, this is what we did for Firefox 4. We, like, updated, like, 150 articles. Um, but we did it like that in chunks. Like, hey, these articles, whew, they're, they're as done as they're going to get. I'm sure there's some mistakes that we'll fix. But they're as done as we think we are. They're, they're, as, they're as done as they're going to get until we launch. And then you'll yeah. see, right? And then here's some more articles that are done. And then here's some more. It, yeah. And so that's what we did. And that was, that was because Localizer said, hey, don't do everything all at once. Or, or please don't keep changing it 87 times after you give it to me. Change once or twice, I get it, but not like right, right. not like fifty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. So so that, that that was one of because we talked about it uh, at our work week, right? It was yeah. like the question to ask localizers what they prefer. So definitely, uh, articles that you know probably won't need to be um, updated. You know, like right. You know, articles that are actually most or, more or less ready. So so yeah, that was. What they ask us, and they also ask what I told before. They also ask us for um, for a more concrete project page, maybe you know, like what we're planning, maybe like um, the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I know Michael that you have the update, the, the calendar with the updates. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone can access it or if you have documented it, but I think I that um, okay, they can so access they ask it, but. Yeah, I have not documented that anywhere. Exactly. I so, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, like, I'm, I'm getting ahead of. I thought, Michael, you put a link to it in a. Just for the. Super. Just for the no, just for the uh, the technical writing program. Ah, okay, yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that that would be great, and and the the calendar with the updates and everything. Uh, they they said that that would be really cool, so that they can. You know, put that in their mobile phones, and they can stay on top of you know when the article freezes. When do we start um, translating? Um, right. So basically, that that was like the, the you know the biggest chunk of, of of feedback was rather on on you know organizational uh, things like this. So cool, it's much better now. I'll, I'll send you I'll send uh, an update, uh, and I'll I'm also gonna blog about it. Um, anything else to add about this? If not, the next thing is, Rosanna, did you add this about uh, get involved pages redirected to superheroes wanted? Isn't it the other way around? Uh, right. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry. The superheroes page wanted is now redirected to the get involved page. Yep. So I was wondering what happened with the old uh, superheroes wanted page. Did it disappear completely? Yes. Well, it's well, in the history. I mean, it's redirected. So the okay. content of that is still saved in the history of that article. Okay. So I can show you how to find it. Do you need to find it? Is that the deal? Oh. Uh, yeah, I need to find it. I just wanted to make sure that we, because the new uh, Get Involved pages are, you know, they have a lot of, I mean, they have less content. We try to structure it better. Um, but I just want to make sure that we're not losing any content or that we're offering new contributors uh, all the content that they need. So that, that was what I was asking, like if they were like hosted somewhere else right now. Otherwise, if you send me the link, I'll just check them and make sure that uh, we offer the very same content uh, on the new pages. That was all. Um, I don't think there's anything missing, but you can go. I didn't think so either, but I didn't memorize the Superheroes Wanted page. So here, I'm going to paste it in here so um yeah i'm just you know i just wanted to make sure because i i i i made the new get involved pages and you know they really they have like three three sentences like one two three and you know there's a link to the documentation 
Um, but I, I, you know, just wanted to make sure that we have everything there. Yep. You can look at the history and look at the revisions and find it. Perfect. But I don't Thank think you. There's anything major? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. I'll Thank you. I'll just look at it. Okay. Um, the next thing I know, uh, Rosanna, you're just just back from traveling and and everything. And if I sent you an email about this right now, it would be one of like a thousand emails. But um, just to put this idea out there for you that we should probably talk about uh, some more next week mm -hmm. in our one on one. But um, while you were gone, <laughs> we were we kind of wrapped up that whole thread about the roles and all right. the different permissions. I'm sorry, I didn't chime in. I, 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 I wish I had the time. But um, I think the next step, uh, I was talking to Kadir, and, and the next step is to um, start creating the groups that need to be created and assign permissions or reassign permissions to groups the way we talked about it at the, at the team week. And if there's something that can't be done because the permissions don't work that way, then we need to file a bug to make the permissions work that way. Um, right. I, I briefly talked. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, I, we, we, I can I can look at it and we can we can start making the plan. Um, I saw Ricky in, in, in the Mozilla Hispano meetup and we briefly talked about uh, the permission changes. Uh, I was a little um, afraid uh, of the amount of work that it will need take to change the change document permission, the one that has all this log and tags and all of that. Um, so maybe that's something that we need to address uh, rather sooner than later, right, Ricky? <clears throat> Sorry. Well, I, I was talking. Uh, we, we talked about the permission changes uh, while I was in in, in Peru, right? While we were in Peru, uh, and I told you about the the permission that, that that's you know everything that's under you know um, change article. Um, so we probably need to come to this because you said that it could be complicated to yeah like right because right, right now we we broke up uh ready for uh keywords and it's already causing issues because um it doesn't make sense to have that permission on localizations only in english and we put it behind a global permission so we already have to fix that i think because like if Verdi changes keywords and nobody in Spanish without the permission is able to update those changes. And I think anybody should be able to translate what you did. Keywords. So I, I think this whole permissions thing, you need to like figure it out and um, spec it out better because you can't just go breaking the site like crazy. <laughs> so we have actually, we have, a, we have a whole thread where we've spec'd it out. Um, but uh, we can probably write it in a more condensed format. Um, well, I haven't seen right. it, so. Yeah. So wait, as far as I know, my, um, when we are talking about the keywords now, the only reason we put it behind the privilege was because uh, there's just any uh, people who shouldn't do it would go in there <coughs> and change the keywords, right? Right. So like, that, like this is not regular, regular sumo. No, no, no. Anyone with a, a sumo account, right? And so any a regular editor would go to update an article, and then they would also change all the keywords. Um, exactly. And you'd want to approve their change to the article, but not the, you know, because the keywords ninety nine percent of the time we don't have to add them or change them, and and it seemed like everybody always wanted to. Like with every revision, wanted to also revise keywords. So, Ricky, then the solution would be to add that uh, permission to uh, local leaders and local reviewers. So, all of them should get that permission to change that, uh, to change keywords. I don't know. I, I, I think, well, first of all, keywords is very, is a hack that we have and doesn't even make sense to localize it because it's, we're just trying to trick search. And that stuff isn't localizable, right? Like you're trying to, to add a synonym where where it's a it's basically a limitation of our search engine because we don't have synonyms yet, and you're trying to add synonyms into the keywords. So in English, we might have enable and activate. They're kind of synonyms, but you, you try to translate the Spanish. I mean, you, you're not going to be able to translate that, right? So 
So first of so all, maybe keywords doesn't ones. even make sense for localizations, right? Maybe keywords shouldn't appear in any localization. It's more work and, and it's garbage work, right? It's not helping them. Uh, second, if we say, OK, maybe we need to translate keywords, then I think only certain people should be able to change keywords in English, but anybody should be able to localize them, if it makes sense, right? Because right now, um, maybe there's a change in the keywords for a document and then a new contributor comes in for for any language and they want to put the article up to date and they can't because they don't have permission to update the keywords makes sense it, it is a balance act essentially because we will have the same issue in if we have the issue in english you will have the same issue in other languages as well people who are not supposed to who are normal users coming in and changing keywords if you have that in English, uh, you will have that I, in other languages. I, I don't think, um, I think most of the other languages, the edits are just to get the article up to date, not to add new stuff. In general, I think that's what people do because no, no, they what, have what the localization mindset, not the edit mindset. No, no, what is happening is that, so what the issue that we have on, in Sumo uh, was also by normal users, right? Michael, it's not editors who are doing that necessarily, not people who want to edit the article. Am no. I understanding that correctly? No, no, no. It's people who want to edit the article. They feel like... Okay, then I misunderstood that. Yeah, they feel like they have to change the keywords also. Like, people okay. think they're being helpful, so they, they add a bunch of keywords. Oh, this is uh, related to this, 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 and this. <laughs> so every time someone updates the article, they, like, add some more keywords to it. And I keep trying to explain how... We don't hardly ever have to add keywords to an article. So maybe keyword, I mean, I think this is what you proposed, but um, we didn't do it. Maybe keywords should just be on the document, and then um, we should only use them in English if that's what makes sense or not. And then them. only the people that have permission to edit the top section are going to be able to. Well, I, I think the thing about keywords is you still want them available for other languages, like this is going to be a big thing for Firefox OS, for instance. So, <clears throat> um, um, in but Firefox why? OS, why do you why do you want them? What do you want them for? Well, so it's part of the the uh, content tuning, right? So if the right article isn't showing up, um, I mean it's still your last resort. But if the right article doesn't show up in the search, you might have to add a keyword to get that one to show up where you want it to um, in the search. And especially with Firefox OS, where basically all of our help is going to be localized. I mean, like, no one's going to use the English help. Um, uh, okay. So, still so need the ability yeah. to add a keyword there. So I think that's, that, that, that means this shouldn't be a revision field because um, each language should be independent, right? They should have their own keywords, and, and they're probably not translations one or the other, right? That's probably so. true, yeah. So, so it's, it shouldn't be part of our localization process. It should be like some field in the document that, you know, like the title, right? Just handled just like the title. Could be. And each locale, I mean, I, I don't think any locale is going to be, I mean, maybe, I don't know if they pay attention um, to be t tweaking to searches, searches and stuff. But, yeah. but I think that's a lot of work that, that Maybe some of us do, but I don't, I don't know that localizers have as much time to, to be tweaking that stuff like that. Well, but, we, will, we know that we but, will at least do it for Portuguese. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, maybe we have to go back and change that again. But so, Ricky, I added a link there at the bottom. See, it says KB Vision, and then there's a, I added a sub bullet spec. So, this is the um, forum thread that came from our from our team week with all the this is an outline of um, of new groups and which permissions would be each group would have okay so it's this uh, okay update previous draft okay um so kadir was thinking that we may be able to just do this and assign these permissions this way. But I think Rosanna was was saying that when she talked to you, it sounded like there was some permission or 
group of, there were some things that were grouped as permissions that you couldn't separate and give this part to this group and this part to another group. And if yeah, so, I mean, that's where we have to file a bug. The permissions should be, yeah, they, they're not like column based and it's going to be hard to do that. Um, yeah. But I, I haven't seen this, so I'll have to go through it. Yeah. I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. Uh, Ricky, if, if you need some, some addition, I, I can, I can, you know, help you understand, you know, why we came to this or anything. And if you want, we can. Um, you know, talk and, and figure out uh, what exactly needs to happen. Because um, there's one permission right now, which is called a change article that entitles a lot of different things that we would like to be able to control more granular, granular, gra okay, granular, whatever. Yeah, we, have to, we want to have more granular, granular control of those things. Um, so yeah, um, if you want, uh, we can um, discuss this. And, and so I, I have a question. Um, so all these roles are just for English. Yes, this is the, the yeah this is the English yeah. thing yeah. So because the English is like the central, and uh, in order to have a structure that allows us to bring more people in, we need to give them at the beginning <clears> less <throat> permissions, and that's why we're trying to you know reshape the whole reviewer a role. So one thing I, I mean, we, we do already have a lot of those uh, permissions, right? Like the permission to review, the permission to uh, mark something as ready for localization, edit keywords, uh, yeah. add a revision. So we actually have a, a lot of those already. As, yeah, uh, the, the, there's, only, yeah. there's only one, which is the uh, change, uh, I think, change article permission. Uh, I think that that has like titles, log, keywords, like there are like a couple of things that are under keywords that. Keywords are permission. special. Uh, which one okay, or not one? keywords, but but the other things, Kadir. That's one? what I understood when we spec that out in the in the meeting room. And if you look at the at this, you know, at the photos that we took under change article, there were a couple of things that uh, aren't uh, break. You know, you you can't take them. Uh, you can change them. Uh, Alone. Which one? Because uh, well, I, I see that you have change articles, titles, log, category, topic, and keywords. Exactly. Right? But yeah. but so there's two groups that have all those, but I don't see a group that has only a part of those. So so as far as I know, we're already good. We don't have to break them up. Yeah. Mm. I don't. Let me see. No, I I think. Uh, which well, I document think are you looking at, uh, Ricky? The support, uh, well, the forum post. Wait, why did you link me to like AK locale? What locale is that? I Come. picked the link. Oh. It was a mistake. Is that Alaska? Akan. Akan is an African language. Well, I, apparently they didn't translate anything. So uh, anyway, I was confused. But yeah, so that, that I looked at that. Um, yeah, we can see. But I think most of this can be implemented just by having groups then. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, like, uh, most of the things uh, are, are done with groups. There was just one permission. I think that it was the permission change article that had different type of things that we wanted to uh, to separate. Is that right, Michael? I'm sorry, say that last part again. It was, it was about one single permission that needs to be break, you know, we need to break down that one single permission, which was change article. Do you, do you have, like, the photos from the work week? Can, can... Uh, so there is no permission that is called change article, but uh, there's the one that's can... called needs change. Maybe that's one. Needs changes. The needs changes field. Was there yeah. ready for localization? No, ready for localization has its own permission. No, I so think keywords have their own permission. Okay. Yeah. No. Can we see that picture? Uh, I think it was archiving there. Uh, has its own. Permission change is document is that change document? It's change thing? document. It's change document. That's Do the permission. change document has its own permission too. Yes, but I think that there's a couple of Michael, things I'm that are sure grouped under change document that we wanted to make more uh, granular. I don't understand what you mean, uh, Rosanna. Which permission is that that we need to break out? Wh which permissions are grouped uh, at, uh, at the moment that you would think? Which are I grouped? I mean, what I understood. From the um, so, do, do you have the picture? 
Uh, everyone, do you have the picture uh, or not? No, it's only it's on my it's only on my iPad over here. But, but okay, uh, I, I Ralph, think Ralph just posted it. Oh, where? Uh, Ralph, can you say where you put that? Yeah, it, it's on the IRC channel. It's hard. It's hard to read this one. It's title, slot, category. Um, that's supposed to be under change document. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so that, that is on. Uh, yeah, let me put. Let me put that into Sumo. So. Yeah, so people can see. Okay. Which permission did you say again, Rosanna? Now I'm looking at the picture. Well, it's hard to read, but it's. Uh, uh, okay, let's see the old sizes. So maybe I can make it bigger. Uh, yep, it's. If you see, under change document, there is uh, title, slot, category, topics, and need changes. And, and we need to take needs changes out of it. That was the, the idea. But needs changes is already its own permission. Um, Isn't it? Need, uh, uh, it might not be. I think, yeah, so that's the one I was saying, the yeah, needs changes yeah. comment. That, that's probably one that we might need to break up. Exactly. That's, so that's what we need to get done. Okay, is that an issue? Uh, uh, shouldn't be, but I think we should spend some time improving this the the editing page because right now it's kind of uh, um, I don't know if Verdi has proposals or anybody. I don't well, like how, it... how I mean, and, and if we're gonna break stuff out, we're gonna have to change it anyway. I don't like how you can get confused because there's two different forms, and you can get confused and edit things in both forms, and then click save, and only one form is gonna be saved. Yeah. No. Yeah, I've noticed that. Forever. Yeah, if you click save description, <laughs> and then you go back. Sorry, there goes your changes. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You're like fine. I think, like if we're gonna break out things, maybe we should have specific pages. Like, hey, you want to add a needs change? Okay, click a link. It goes to a new new form, and you add, you, you you then you come back stuff like that. So that way we can control more granularly what you're changing at once. <clears throat> but that's a separate thing. Yeah, I mean, if so, so we're already at an, at an hour, but I think this is something to keep talking about over the next week, um, because what I would hope is that maybe there's a there's a, a simple change to permissions that will allow us to finish creating all these groups and and start reorganizing right. our community, and then we can go back, we can go and like. Because yes, the editing page is can be confusing, and I've definitely caught the thing where I've changed the article, and then I change something in the description and hit save, and oh, what happened? Yeah. So if you save description, you lose your article content. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so there's definitely more work that we could do there. Okay, perfect. So I, I'm I'm taking the action item. Um, um, I will go through the thread. I will comment on it. Sorry for chiming in so late. Um, I will try to summarize all the changes and create the groups and talk to Ricky about uh, getting the needs uh, changes part out of the uh, um, change document. By the way, is that actually permission. something that we want to give as a special permission? Yes, that's part of the, re the researchers group, Kadir. Okay. Right. So right. right now it's only like reviewers can do it. We want to open that up to more people. Right. Um, <clears throat> so that's my opinion. Uh, you don't have to care, but, <laughs> but so, so yeah. I'll, you're creating like 12 groups here and, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of work to, to maintain those lists. And first of all, do you have enough people to fill all these, to fill the, all these roles? Second, you're going to have to manually, um, you know, like attend your garden. And I think, I mean, seeing, uh, how stuff works, I don't know. I, I guess I'm pessimistic on, on, on this getting just yeah, well, uh, staling, you know? Yeah, really, Stagging I, I, groups. I, yep, because it happens. Yeah, no, I totally see your concerns. The thing is that, you know, this, this whole idea of changing groups and opening it up um, is actually to allow more people to join us in Sumo so that we can actually grow. So this is part of a growth strategy. And I think that we're, we're aware of the risk of you know creating more complicated structures, but at the same time, we think that 
it's not possible to bring more people in if we don't start giving responsibility to others and you know because right now the thing is is you can either have the minimum responsibility or you can have nearly the maximum responsibility and there's like nowhere in or between we you can yeah. either just be a registered user or like we can give you the keys to the to the, the website and and uh and so it makes it hard to promote people because you're like ee, ee, i don't know if you know yeah. right yeah it's like ready, ready for localization ricky that's something that every reviewer could set and that's something that can upset a lot our our, our localizers right yeah so um, we're trying yeah, to like like last week, somebody fixed the typo, and I don't know. They didn't mark it as minor, and mark they marked it as ready for L10N. And then the span I, I was trying to get this helping with Spanish, and then I had to like submit a blank revision to the Spanish just so that it was up to date. Yeah, it's stupid. That's the kind yeah, of we decided against rollback for issues like that because it would be a huge headache. But I think we should be able to have a button. When, like when you're on the Spanish and you say, oh, there's nothing I need to do, just what button that says, hey, there's nothing I need to do, Mark it, just um, say that say I'm up to date. Up to date. Mm. And it will change whatever needs to change so that it looks like it gets up to date. You can build that. I'll put that as an action item for Ricky. <laughs> up to date button. I'm going to stop using Sumo because then I have all these bad ideas. <laughs> Yeah, keep uh, keep coming. Yeah, keep keep those bad ideas coming, Ricky. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the issue is that whoever submitted the edit by mistake or developed by mistake didn't categorize it correctly. Right, right, and that's part of the that's part of the of the like let's let's do levels so that so that as so you can you can uh, we can have uh, levels for people to to help out have more responsibility do more things um but also let them learn before giving them like for instance the power to do something like market ready for localization because then they do it wrong and then you get like 30 emails in the middle of the night going what what is the deal you know <laughs> right uh, guys, I'm sorry, I need to leave for another yep. meeting. Um, it was great, sorry. Uh, I, I will try to get up to date uh, and, and send you all the things uh, that I have from the Mozilla Spano work week and, and try to work on all of these things um, as soon as possible. Cool. I think that's all it right. also. I mean, that's the, that's the list. There's some fun things to check out there at the bottom uh, if you yeah. are interested. And uh, other than that, if there's any, any last words, Nope. Otherwise, uh, that's it. Talk to you guys uh, later. Perfect. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Right. Talk to you later. Bye. -bye.